Hello, here we are again. So I want to wrap up pistons today. So I was going to talk a little bit about the finishing details that I went through. We're going to talk about the construction of the piston and the details of putting the rings back on. And I'm going to put the rings back on for you today. Once the rings are on, we'll be ready to put these pistons back in the engine after we put the connecting rods back on. And uh, so let's go ahead and talk pistons a little bit. Okay, first of all, with pistons, we've got a detail thing going on here. I did all that machine work, had them chucked up in the lathe and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, after doing all the machine work, obviously when we do the machine work, we have to make sure we didn't leave any machine edges here. So we have to get a nice chamfer on there. And that brings up the most important point, which is I see a lot of, uh, you know, engine rebuilds done and people take an engine apart because they had a problem. And then all of a sudden they want to buy new pistons. And I take a look at the pistons and I said, there's nothing wrong with these pistons. Well, they've already been in, they're used. So... When you look at it from a machinist's point of view, the machinist's point of view is, does it meet the specifications of something that will run in this engine? We're talking about an engine. We could be talking about a lathe. We could be talking about a milling machine. We could be talking about a drive system for a boat. Who knows? There are just certain things that when it comes to an engineered part, they have to meet a certain criteria so that they work properly. So the first thing that's most important when we're uh, dealing with a piston is, we need to trust our feel. If we feel an edge, the engine is going to feel the edge. Okay. Once I put these piston rings in, I'm going to have to make sure that these rings, you know, move smoothly in their groove. Okay. We, they can't be hanging up. Everything in the engine is rotting in a layer of oil. That's the important part. You know, we have a big concern with too much oil consumption, but we have to have enough oil consumption that we know that everything is properly lubricated. We can expect some oil consumption with every healthy engine. We just don't want it excessive. So we'll talk about the piston. So I gave some of the descriptions uh, when I was going over machining these things. So this would be the crown of the piston. Okay. The area between the ring grooves are called ring lands. All right. And then the headland is the very top land here. Okay. Uh, the top land contributes a lot of strength to the piston. It's very important. But it also, though, leaves an area of volume between the top compression ring and the crown of the piston, which is a headland volume. Not as critical, I don't think, in gasoline engines as diesel engines, but they're trying to reduce that because it can contribute to emissions because hydrocarbons can get hidden in there. Uh, the other thing that's important to know, too, is that the uh, combustion pressure is supposed to sneak behind that compression ring and push it outward so that it seals. These piston rings we have today are what's called a low tension piston ring. So they don't have a lot of drag in the cylinder. It makes an engine more efficient when, you know, when it, it reduces pumping losses. Okay. So if you can produce a lot of power uh, without having a lot of pumping loss, it makes an engine more efficient. And that's the basic idea today is to squeak as much efficiency as possible. But what I wanted to get at anyway was, even after all the crazy machine work that I did, it's very important that I don't have any kind of, you know, edges or burrs that could potentially poke through the film of oil and score the cylinder walls. The other thing was I talked uh, on the last video about, you know, somebody cleaned all the Teflon, all the pistons. That Teflon is supposed to be there. It will wear, okay? But... If you look closely at this piston, you would see, you know, grooves kind of like a record. And that's from the machine work. When they built these on a lathe, okay, you know, as wonderful as a lathe was it made these, there is still an area there. Now, oil is going to fill those areas generally. But they decided that because of such a short piston, such a small skirt area, you know, below that center line of the wrist pin, uh, this would reduce any friction if we got any kind of skirt slap. The other factor is... Once the piston heats up, it's going to expand to its maximum size, and it's important that, you know, that clearance is dealt with. So now that we've looked at all this, we've, uh, we've inspected it, and we're going to take a look at the ring grooves before I put the rings in, and we'll talk about that a bit. Uh, you can see that, uh, you know, I've already kind of polished this up to make sure I didn't have any defects. Now, 
Uh, we can use Scotch Brite. I, I'm very cautious with Scotch Brite because it can be a little aggressive. You can actually take a lot of metal off with Scotch Brite. I go old school and I use steel wool. Steel wool is really mild. It'll clean it up. It'll give it a little polish, you know, working it by hand, but it's not going to take a lot of material off. It gives a beautiful finish. Okay, everybody. So here's a bird's eye view of this piston. And now you can get a real good look. All right. I cleaned in all of the grooves. Got all these grooves clean. We wanted to make sure we could get the original, you know, a quantity of oil in those ring grooves. When we're cleaning those grooves, we need to be very careful not to widen the groove at all. We want the ring to fit in there just the way it was supposed to. So we shouldn't be scraping any kind of metal out when we're cleaning the little bit of carbon out of there. I think I saw a couple little tiny crumbs of carbon in there, but for the most part, we got everything. Uh, this is the feel part I'm talking about. You know, we shouldn't feel any kind of nicks or bumps sticking out. All right. There's that. Teflon I was talking about somebody cleaned off before that Teflon panel is there uh, In case we get any kind of skirt slap. It's going to take up You know uh, and and prevent scoring. All right, we take a look at the geometry of this piston this wrist pin All right, the center line. There is not much skirt left beyond that. All right, so it's uh, That's a that's a tight fit now. Let's talk about putting these rings in so I know if we read the manual, or re we read all the textbooks once I started out at school and I started installing piston rings, they want me to use a ring expander to install the rings. And I know uh, after I do this, I'm going to be scolded by somebody for this, but I I'm just speaking the truth. All right, so here we are. Let's put some piston rings in. This is the separator ring. First. So the old control ring consists of a separator and two small little low tension uh, wiper rings. Okay, and they do exactly what they say they do. You know, we deposit oil. If you look closely, we can see we can see we've got these oil passages. So when the sprayer oil sp sprayers are spraying oil up under. The piston to cool it, they're also oil is moving through those little ports there, and they're filling that groove of the old control rings so that they can deposit a layer of oil on the cylinder wall as the piston moves. So let me make sure I'm aware of where that opening is. <clears throat> and I need to be very, very sure that. The ends do not overlap because then they'll bind up in the cylinder. It'd be a terrible mess. And then okay, so there I got that top ring over the separator, and now. It's important that the ring openings don't line up. So if I have this one here, if I take, take, take each one 180, 180, 180, I can uh, keep those openings as far, as far apart as possible. So this is what I was talking about spiraling the rings on. Again, I've been spiraling rings on spiraling rings on since I was about 12 years old. So I know every book I read, you know, ASE and you know every other engine building book tells you to use a ring expander. But I don't know. My problem with a ring expander is I've been putting these on this way. I've never broken one this way. I've watched a lot of students break rings with the ring expander. It just it has to open so far and then they still end up dragging the two openings of the ring over the you know lands of the of the piston. So here or the toughest ring. This ring on the bottom side has a little uh, little notch around under there. Okay, and that is generally for 
the pressure, the uh, combustion pressure is to get behind the ring and provide force that helps these low tension piston rings seal against the cylinder wall. So there we go. That's the tough one. That was the second ring. It's a thicker ring. They're a very brittle ring. All right. They're floating nicely. Now I get the top ring. And here we go. Breaking the rules. So I get the tail in there. Spiral it around. Let's lift the tip of it over. And there she is in the groove. They float perfectly. This piston cleaned up ideally. So I think we're ready to install the connecting rods. I have a mark here. I have marked the piston number and I have also engraved, I engraved that. I've engraved the connecting rod so that it coincides with the marking on the piston. The other factor we need to look at is that this wrist pin is not always centered in the piston. This wrist pin can be further to one side than the other, closer to one of the thrust faces. And you can see there is an uneven wear, you know, because we've got a major thrust face and a minor thrust face, right? And when we're producing power, this piston, if it's pushing the connecting rod this way, all right, then this side of the piston is being forced against a cylinder wall and that's going to be the major thrust face. So it's going to, you know, be most likely to have the most wear. Well, the manufacturers have discovered that they can balance the wrist pin location and get a better balance to reduce that amount of major thrust. So just a, another interesting little thing. So this piston is pretty much ready to go in, but all the pistons, we should have rings floating nice and freely like that. And I already went through all these ones and they are ready to go. So they look wonderful. We've already measured the, uh, weighed them and measured the volume. They all weigh 394 grams. And uh, I have measured the amount of volume and the volume is about uh, 14 milliliters. I checked all of them. I, I think I got a set of pistons ready to go back into the engine.